welcome back to another episode of the Brett Snodgrass Podcast. And I have a great guest on today's show. I always say that, but today is especially great. I got Frank Lunn on the podcast episode with me from Kahuna Business Group. And uh, before I talk about Frank, go over to irondeep.com. Check out what we're doing. We got blogs. We got videos. We got men's awakening retreats coming up. We got fulfilling retreats that are coming up. So check out everything that we got at irondeep.com. Also go over to Iron Deep, the YouTube channel, and we got new videos that come out each and every month. So check that out. Uh, so who is Frank Lunn? Frank is a founder and business owner of Kahuna Business Group. Uh, they focus on accounting as their baseline, but really they are consultants for business owners and entrepreneurs that really want to increase their business valuation. We talk about that a lot on today's episode and we ask, like, have you ever sold a business or bought a business? How do you value your business? And not just buying and selling, but what about getting partners to come in, getting investors to invest in you, getting a bank to look at you? How do you increase your valuation? It's not just about income or revenue. It's so many different parts to building up a great valuation, a great book report for the lender, the bank, uh, a buyer that might want to look at your business and how do you increase the valuation to have a solid business? That's what we dive in today. Here is Frank Lund. How you doing, Frank? Excellent. How are you doing, Brett? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for being on our show today. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Yeah, I've actually had you on a podcast before when we did a Simple Wholesaling yes. podcast, episode 157. Absolutely. So it was a pleasure then. We talked about your book. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the book again? It was uh, The Waves... Kahuna. Yeah, Carpe Carpe Aqualus sees yeah. the wave, and um, yep, and blessings and adversity is another one that's related to that, and that's kind of from an entrepreneur's perspective how we turn lemons into lemonade. So. Yes, I love that. And you have another book, Stacking the Logs, right? Yep, Stack the Logs, and that was actually my first book that uh, I wrote about uh, 20, 20 plus years ago uh, when my son was going through some cancer treatment uh, mm -hmm. down at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And now he's 29 and can 20 years cancer free. Oh, so yeah, it was amazing. So that was some uh, advice that my dad gave me early on that I absolutely hated. And then it took a while, you know, it's funny how your parents get smarter as yeah. you get older. Um, <laughs> and it really was something that I could apply to, to life. And it was a strategy that uh, I basically use as framework for entrepreneurship of mm -hmm. setting your course and taking action, accept feedback, simply as feedback then correcting your course as you need to, so that you can, you know, continue and keep stacking until you achieve what you want to achieve. So mm -hmm. it's a very oversimplified version, but yeah. it's, it served me well. No, I love that. That's awesome. Um, well, Frank, like I said, thank you for being on the show today. And uh, I, you run the Kahuna Business Group. I've worked with mm -hmm. your company for several years now and uh, as kind of the bookkeeping accounting side of things. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about business valuation, which we're going to dive into today. But give the audience a little taste about who is Frank Lund. Sure. Well, I'm the uh, husband of one wife, Lisa. Um, for 30 years now, and um, the father of three adult children uh, who all live in Arizona now, and we live in Illinois. Mm, but um, yeah, <laughs> and um, I, I have just a huge heart for God, and I'm so grateful that He loves me in spite of myself, and uh, just an imperfect follower of Jesus. And as a, an entrepreneur, basically looking at how do we continue to uh, utilize our business as a platform for um, for mission and for purpose uh, with a kingdom thought, but at the same time still be practical and rooted in the world and the, the economic realities. And it's always a, a challenge. And I love to to be able to talk with other entrepreneurs of faith and be able to to navigate that because it's never. I mean, there's no clean lines for it, and yeah. um, there's just different thoughts and attitudes and approaches. So yeah. it's exciting to to learn together. Yeah, for sure. And you've been an entrepreneur, business owner for several years now, right? I mean, when was, when, when was your journey? When, when did that start for you? Well, I was in the, the first Gulf War and that, that ended in uh, the 90, early 90s. And I started this business um, about 1995. I had a day job 
that I kept and I would come in at four o'clock in the morning. I had a partner and I would do the accounting and the bookkeeping. And then I'd do my day job and then come back in the evenings. And it was, it was pretty brutal for a while, mm. but we officially started this in like 1995. And it was an, initially as a credit card merchant services company, community merchant services. And uh, I knew the last project that I was in within the convenience store industry was about ATMs. And so I knew that ATMs were going to start to be able to be available away from banks. Uh, we started another company. I was kidding with our lawyer. And I said, you know, if this ATM thing works out, it could be the big kahuna. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that's how the kahuna name came about. It was a joke at, at first, but we'd go to these trade shows and, and learn and everything was like, hey, it's the kahuna guys yeah. from Bloomington, Illinois. Hmm, how did that work <laughs> out? Funny. So, um, but it was a, a good representation of kind of figuring out what everybody else is doing and then doing something a little bit different. Mm. And that's really served us well. And we've, uh, we sold that business, um, had a pretty nice exit in 2012 and then realized how many mistakes that, that we made, that I made along the way on this entrepreneur journey and realized, wow, I mean, I, I don't have any love for accounting per se, but I've learned how to love accounting as an opportunity for guidance for entrepreneurs that we just didn't know we didn't know. And same thing with value. I, I left millions and millions of dollars on the table. It was still a great exit. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm very blessed by it, but it should have been considerably more. And I just didn't know, you know, when you're selling a business, whether it's by choice or by somebody else's circumstance, we're an amateur. It's like, even though we're pro at business, pro at entrepreneurship, I mean, let's get real. How many times are you actually selling a business? Right. Um, so yeah. we're an amateur and we're across the table from pros. And um, there are so many lessons that I look back on now. I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I, how did I not know that? But, but as entrepreneurs, you know, we're constantly putting ourselves out there above our level of competence and we have to, to learn how to uh, adapt and, and how to take those opportunities to learn what we need to, to get to that next level. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Because uh, yeah, I mean, I've been a business owner for several years now. But again, I've never sold a business. I wouldn't know uh, how to go about that or how to value my business. And I know I've been working with you and uh, you mm -hmm. guys have helped me a little bit with that. But, uh, you know, I've worked again with you as far as the bookkeeping side, the accounting side, and that's kind of um, that's a side of your business, but it's not right. all of Kahuna. But why, mm -mm. again, take us in, like, where'd you start there? Um, yeah. And why should other business owners listen to, to, to you and to this, mm -hmm. you know, why, why should they dig in more and be more intentional about their accounting and their books? Well, it's a great question because again, I never had any great love for accounting. Like most business owner visionaries. I mean, I'm, I was about marketing and relationships and building and business development. And I had at the time I had a CFO and, and, I just really abdicated a lot of things that I didn't really think were that important, but they were. And in the strategy of growing a business, there's you know really five different components of it. There's their growth, you know, your revenue, the cash flow, the profits, the the value of your business that you could exchange at some point for the future um, with with somebody else because you're going to exit at some point, whether it's you know this way or this way, mm -hmm. and most of us don't think about that. And then ultimately building wealth. And, and as entrepreneurs, there's really two ways of building wealth. Um, and they're, they're not, it's not binary. It's not either this or that, but it's either, you know, I'm taking, I'm building money inside the business. I'm taking it out in either salary or compensation or like compensation, or I'm going to build and increase the value of this asset that at some day I will exchange for cash capital or some other value exchange and that's the foundation of my future wealth. Mm. And I didn't think about any of that. And this business that we had in the ATM industry, I mean, we were doing about 22, $23 million in revenue annually. And I thought, wow, this is great. I mean, I might be even smart. And then I realized, yeah. no, I'm not smart. <laughs> um, and I mean, to do happened, a business like that, it, oh, it takes yeah. some smarts. So, well, I, there was some, some luck in that. And I had a great team and, we did a lot to really help the people that we served, which is really the, the foundation of 
kind of our mantra. We achieve our victories through the victories of those we serve. Mm -hmm. And we've always been in a business to business environment looking to serve other business owners and entrepreneurs. And at the time, it was in this one niche within the ATM industry. And I just didn't really know and understand so much about like what was value. And I didn't have a value, a valuation. At the time, you know, most valuations were like ten to $15,000. Um, and it was really only after something happened. So once we kind of were down the road where we had to sell because our biggest client uh, decided they wanted to sell and it was going to create an issue if we didn't go along with it. And they said, we need to do a valuation. Well, once we had a value, that was what it was, but we couldn't do anything about it. So mm. had we known or had we had some indication of the strategic value of our business, there's so many things we would have done differently in the planning. Mm. And that's really what I want to share and impart with other entrepreneurs because so much has changed in the last 10 years. I mean, the, the technologies changed, the methodologies have changed and the focus for the perspective and benefit of the entrepreneur has changed. And, you know, we're in a sense building a, a category that doesn't exist, which is strategic business value for entrepreneurs mm. and looking at the value of your business, not just for some future exit, but it really is currency right now, currency for what you can do with that, whether it's bringing partners on or, or partners moving to the next level or whether it's capital and cash or um, a number of things. But if you don't understand the value of your business, you're really missing out on a, a lot of what you can do to maximize not only your current income, but certainly the foundation for your future wealth. Yeah. What are some of the components of kind of value valuing your business? Because a lot of times you might Google, oh, mm. how do you value my business? And people might say, oh, it's two X time or three X right. times your revenue or I don't know, mm -hmm. something like that. And they're like, oh, yeah. my business is worth, yeah, $5 million. Is that right? There's a lot more that goes into it. Well, and, and not to, to be trite, but the, the true value of a business is what somebody else is willing to either pay you for it or loan against it or, you know, whatever that value exchange right. is. And you're right. I mean, there, <clears throat> excuse me, there are a lot of heuristics or rules of thumb, you know, whether it's a multiple of, you know, what they call SDE or seller's discretionary earnings, which is basically your, your income, um, or EBITDA earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, which is again, another fancy word for, you know, what's your profit that you're taking home. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing that I learned the hard way is there's really a level and it's about a million dollars in revenue and businesses that are below a million dollars in revenue, they get measured one way. And it's not a great, measure. I mean, it is that measure of profits and, and, and seller's discretionary income mm -hmm. above a million dollars. And depending on what industry you're in and, and what your, your, what's called your NAICS code or your SIC code, which is just about your industry category above that million, then you start to look at multiples of revenue. And so it starts to become a little bit of a geometric uh, equation. And if you don't know, if you, you know, you might have the wrong category, you know, a lot of people start a business in one area and then they start to move or shift or pivot and they're still classified as, you know, something totally different from what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to dramatically affect the value of your business. Mm -hmm. And so not knowing the value of your business, um, it used to be really difficult to do so, but now it's so easy to do that. And not knowing puts you at a strategic disadvantage. So it's so important, I think, to build that into your strategy right now, just to understand like what's the value of your business. There's really, you know, there's three things. There's um, the kind of the good, bad, and ugly of valuations that you can get without it being super um, complex or, or expensive or anything like that. I mean, you can, it's like a sports physical to me versus like the Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need a sports physical to know, you know, what's my general health. I don't need to know, you know, all of the, the bloods and, and everything to a, to the nth degree. I just need to know, am I okay to start doing this exercise? And then if I want to lose weight or if I want to get more healthy, what do I need to do mm -hmm. versus the Mayo Clinic? And sometimes you need the Mayo Clinic, but if you don't, you're kind of missing out. And so the strategic part, which is to me like the sports physical is um, what's the enterprise value of your business on paper? You know, just looking at some trends, your tax returns, uh, your industry that you're in, your geography, 
And it's kind of like Zillow. I mean, you know, Zillow doesn't give you the calibrated value of a house as if you had an appraiser come in. But if you're going to start buying and working in a neighborhood and looking for certain house values, you can use Zillow and open records and some other things and come really close to what the value should be or value ranges. And that strategic understanding of value, that's really what we want to help other entrepreneurs do in their own business. So the enterprise value, then there's the asset value, which is basically like if you just sold everything and what's that? worth on paper, mm -hmm. but it misses out on a lot of really cool things. And then there's that last part, which is liquidation. If you're just like pushed into a corner and you've got to just sell everything and it's the fire sale. Mm -hmm. So kind of the good, bad, and ugly of values. And it's not that you're going to do something with that immediately, but it's so you know, and then understanding more importantly, you know, what are the magnifiers and multipliers of your value? So if your value is like, let's say it's a million dollars today, but you want to exit someday and you want it to be a $10 million dollars okay, what are the things that you can do that are going to magnify and multiply, you know, the 80, 20 levers to just add to your strategy so that you're doing things that are going to absolutely increase value. Mm. And on the other hand, what are the things that you want to, you know, avoid so that you're not diminishing, detracting, or possibly even destroying wealth uh, or the value of your business because of things that you probably don't know, you don't know. I mean, like in our case, um, at the time, we had one client who was more than 15% of our business. Mm. Um, and that was what really drove our value down. And it cost probably three or $4 million in aggregate because of that one thing that we didn't know. Wow. And so a lot of you know what our focus is, is empowering um, exponential entrepreneurship and helping entrepreneurs who are the kind of, like us that are out driving their headlights, you know, packing the parachute on the way down. You know, we don't know what we don't know, but we're not afraid to to get out there. Right. But sometimes we miss and and don't know what we don't know. And it would be sure nice, it sure would be nice to have a little bit of understanding so that we can align and calibrate uh, our accounting to be able to achieve what's most important to us. And yeah. that's a, a subjective thing, you know, whether it's I want to just amass a huge amount of value for an exchange someday in the future, whether it's I want to take a lot of money out of the business to do things um, now and then invest in other things like real estate or cryptocurrency or stock exchange, that that's kind of subjective. But if you don't know what the choices or alternatives are, it's hard to plan for that. Mm. That's awesome. Now, thanks for sharing. What are uh, maybe a couple of ways, two or three ways that someone can immediately try increase their value? Like what are some those those top things that uh, mm -hmm. this year, if they do a couple of these little shifts in their business, it can increase their value? It's a great question. I think the first thing is if you have the ability to drive and, and get your revenue to that million dollar mark or better, because again, below that, it's it's just not as exciting for an outside person. And I think that's the other part is mm -hmm. look at the business through the eyes of an acquirer. And that's where, you know, there's really two types of buyers. There's an economic buyer, and then there's a strategic buyer. And, and again, whether you're thinking about exit now or at some point in the future, it's still worth thinking about this because an economic buyer is going to buy for what is right on the table, what they can see, you know, your earnings. It could be something that's, um, you know, they want to roll your business into to theirs, but a strategic buyer is going to be looking at things like your branding, um, things like your systems, things like your specific key client relationships. Uh, there may be other things that you just don't know have value. And if you don't think about those things outside of just your, the normal economics of your, you know, your cash flow and profitability, then you're going to miss out on ways to really add value to your business. Mm -hmm. And I think that the other thing that's really important is get yourself out of the business, be a business owner, not a business operator as soon as possible. Because if you're, if the business revolves around you, then what value is it if somebody else wants to acquire it? Mm -hmm. um, and so those, those are some of the things that we want to help business owners and entrepreneurs think about. And again, even if an exit is five, 10, 15 years down the road, it doesn't matter. It's still worth because you're, you're selling your business, whether you realize it or not, it's either to somebody else or selling it to yourself. Mm. 
Yeah. And wouldn't you want to own just a great quality business that doesn't revolve around you? It just makes cash. It's like a goose that lays the golden eggs. That's um, right. Take care of that goose. <laughs> <laughs> that's goose right. is your friend. No, that's right. Uh, so you said get yourself out of the business. I mean, isn't that mm -hmm. everybody's dream? I mean, I think every entrepreneur that's listening to this, is like, well, I would. That sounds great. I'd love to get myself mm -hmm. out of the business. Um, and but you said this this isn't just because you want freedom, but it increases dramatically increases the value oh, yeah. of your business. Absolutely. So, um, no, that's awesome. And but but the problem is that most owners are the drivers mm -hmm. of their business. I mean, isn't that what you're seeing? I mean, most owners right. are the ones making all the big decisions, calling all the mm -hmm. shots. They're in their business. Work. They're the ones working 80 hours a week driving. Right. So, <clears throat> and, and it's definitely a challenge. But if you think about, um, you know, how do you own the business and then look for other ways to add value through people that can operate the business and, and candidly, probably better than you. Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge. You know, we always feel like, oh, I've developed this level of competence and we have too much confidence in our own competence instead of looking at and saying, how can we utilize what we've learned to make somebody else more equipped and, or better equipped than we are and not feel threatened because um, sometimes like that control, like I, I want to control everything. Well, that misses out on as an entrepreneur to be able to create uh, an enterprise and have other people build their value and their wealth through the, the expansion of that enterprise, of your dream, of your, um, of your vision. Mm. And that to me is the exciting next level. It's like parenting. I mean, you know, when you have a little child, you've got to take care of it and they revolve everything around you. But at some point as they grow older and they have their own autonomy, then you can feel the pride that, you know, I was part of that. Now they're driving it. They're, they're responsible. And it's just a whole different level, but we have to have that vision up front that um, I want to be involved in this at the operating level only as long as I need to. And the faster that I can equip or empower other people to take on those, those roles, that's the only way that I'm going to achieve exponential. And that was a word you and I were discussing earlier that kind of has taken on some different significance to me now. Yeah, definitely. I want to talk about that word exponential, what's so it's been meaning mm -hmm. to you. I also just want to dig into, you talked about this revenue businesses under a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that if, as a, so my entrepreneurs, my entrepreneur wheels always start turning. So would it be interesting to people? And I think other people do this because I don't buy a lot of, I never bought a business. I never sold a business. I don't really know how all that works, but, and I don't think a lot of business owners do. It's just, there's some people that play in that. And then there's some mm -hmm. people they are just like, Oh, that's too much. Compli it's too complicated. I don't understand it. Right. But if you start to really learn the valuation of a business, could you go in and take a, uh, you know, buy a business that maybe is under a million and then take it to the next level and then sell it. And a lot of people do that. That's a, that's a great model, I think, is mm -hmm. to increase these valuations. If you learn how to do it, um, it could be a great business model in of itself. You go in, increase the valuation of a business over, you know, two, three years and then exit. Right. Do you see people and, doing that? Oh, absolutely. And that's a great point because like what you do with simple wholesaling, I mean, you look at all the verticals that are that are adjacent to what you do and you think about, okay, well, we always need a cleaning company or we always need a construction or we always need certain elements. And one of the challenges that all these companies have is, well, how do I find customers or clients? And if you have a model where it's like, we always know we have this, maybe we could uh, bring in another company into the family and it, it runs on its own, but it comes in and, and we can find the efficiencies because maybe we don't need another general manager. We just need a, um, an on-site manager or mm -hmm. some other things. And where can we find efficiencies in whether it's the accounting or whether it's the, the structure. And so it really makes sense to look at, you know, what other things do you utilize right now as vendors or um, components that are again, maybe ancillary or adjacent or parallel um, that are aligned with your business and your vision that, you could maybe acquire at a discount, but still a, a fair and equitable value. But the moment that you take and bring them into your operations, 
you're going to find efficiencies and you're going to be able to make that value increase right away. Mm. So any, sometimes it's even the cash flow. It's, it's, it's very similar. I think a lot to what you're currently doing, um, you know, in this other business and looking at, you know, how could I use the cash flow of this business to be able to pay for it, to make a, an exit. That's a, a good win for the person who's looking to exit. And we don't know what reasons it could be. You know, I thought I was going to, hand this business over to my kids and they don't want to be in it or, right. you know, something has changed. And so a lot of times just thinking about it from the, how can I add value to the person who might be kind of stuck? And it's not about just how do we get it cheap? How do we, you know, how do we negotiate hard and get that? Sometimes it's, you know, I want to actually pay you more than it's worth, but I want to make sure that it's, um, the value is going to come back because you're going to help me do financing in a way that I couldn't do on my own, or right. you're going to stay with the business. And if, if we can actually take it to, to a higher level together, we'll share in that. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of different ways in creativity um, that I don't think really existed 10 years ago because the technology didn't exist, especially like with the accounting. Uh, that's one of the things right now that we see because the accounting is so fragmented the, the bookkeeping, the accounts receivable, the accounts payable, the payroll, all these different pieces. And it's hard to, to manage it together in a way. But at the same time, it's much easier because you're not having to wait. Like we used to have to wait 40 days until after the, the month ended till we know how did we do, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, you died three months ago. You just didn't, we just didn't tell you. <laughs> <Right>. you <know? laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what are some like modern tools that people can use to, to help? I mean, I know Kahuna has mm -hmm. some tools to help with valuation, but talk about that a little bit, like resources and tools. Yeah. There's a lot of really good, um, simple ways, like, you know, just again, the heuristics, the rules of thumb that you can look at for your industry. And, and it really does, you know, depend on your, your industry, your geography, whether you're brick and mortar, whether you're uh, across the country, um, we've started really focusing on what we call a discovery value assessment, mm -hmm. and it really helps, um, you know, we've got one that's a little bit more premium and we've got some that are, you know, less than $600. And with just a, a couple years tax returns and a little bit of understanding from the owner's perspective of, you know, is this industry, is it growing or is it, is it declining? What's the geography? Um, there's a few simple things that we can do to provide that, that business owner with a really good understanding of, again, that kind of good, bad, and ugly approach mm -hmm. so that you can then understand, but what's more important, you know, the enterprise, the asset and the liquidation value, but what's more important is to understand within your business, your industry, what are those little things, you know, big doors move on small hinges. What are the little things in your industry specific that you can magnify and multiply value and watch out for so you don't diminish or, or devalue or destroy. Mm -hmm. And just understanding where you are, whether you want to build it into your strategy right now, it doesn't really matter, but just understanding that and kind of like putting it in your hip pocket, that's valuable. If you want to take it to the next level and say, okay, now how do we start to set targets? So, you know, right now we're at, let's say a million dollars, we want to be worth 5 million in the next two to three years. What would we have to do? How would that look? And then gamify it. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that, that we're trying to help um, regular entrepreneurs who have that vision and ambition um, that are a little bit off from normal proprietors, normal um, business owners that are looking for incremental. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's what most businesses in, in America are, are the, the incremental um, I know what I want to do and I just want to improve a little bit each year. And that's fantastic. And then there are the, you know, as the Steve Jobs calls the crazy ones that, you know, we have vision that's really exceeds our grasp and we don't have any real idea how we're going to do it, mm -hmm. but we know doggone it, we're going to do it mm -hmm. and we'll figure it out together. And those are the entrepreneurs that we really want to help utilize value as part of their guidance system and also accounting as a dynamic guidance system. So it's not just past, how did we do two months ago, but like a, a GPS, you know, yeah. this is our target. And then how do you accept feedback and correct course because the economy changes, other things, um, you know, you know, you know, within the value of your business, your business may be improving month over month, but if the economy tanks, then the value is diminished because that's part of what makes up the, for sure. At least the at least the academic value. 
which right now, I mean, all we're using it for is just feedback. So what do I do with this? Well, I can't change the macroeconomic trends of the United States, mm -hmm. but we can make sure that we're doing what we need to within growth and profitability and and cash flow in our own industry. Yeah. And the things that we can control, it's like the entrepreneurial version of the serenity prayer. Um, you know, controlling what we can control and kind of giving the rest to God and just doing the best we can with what we have. Um, but it's really important to understand where we are, where we're going and what the possibilities and options are. Yeah. No, definitely. I think you, you know, you guys use some amazing uh, technology and tools mm -hmm. to help small businesses uh, kind of give that valuation. Just like when I see, oh, Forbes or this uh, valuated this business, this big business for a mm -hmm. billion dollars. And I'm like, how did I get right. that? Like, so you use some of yeah. the same stuff just for smaller businesses. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. So let's get back to that word exponential. I mean, that's something that's yes. been on your heart. Uh, it's been sure on your has. mind this year. And talk about that. Like why, why has that been speaking to you so much? This word exponential when it comes to business and freedom time mm -hmm. valuation. Well, like like you as an entrepreneur, I mean, we we tend to kind of think about life in that J-shaped curve and the exponential, which is, you know, from the academic version is uh, it's an increase with the rate of increase increasing. It's like, okay, I have to get my head around that. But that that's what creates that the J-shaped curve that we all get excited about. And thinking about growth and revenue and profitability as exponential, that is kind of a good baseline. But then as we start to think more, and especially from a faith perspective and looking at, okay, what do I really want to be exponential in my life? Mm. I want an exponential marriage. You know, I want to have an exponential uh, opportunity to, to reach others for Christ. I want to have an exponential opportunity for freedom or for contribution or um, to be able to do things that are beyond money. And so thinking about my business, my entrepreneurial endeavor, as a platform to achieve exponential in what's really important to me, you know, whether it's time freedom, whether it's contribution, whether it's um, planting a church or doing other things, it, it's different for everybody, but I think it's so important to really ex express and understand it because we weren't really called for, um, I think, small things. I think, you know, when, you know, we were all called for a purpose, and as entrepreneurs, I think we are called to be able to do more than just make money and tithe or make money and um, hopefully, you know, have something that people remember us by and they call it legacy. Um, and so for me, you know, the, the challenge and the rub always in entrepreneurship is what am I doing and what does God want me to do? And what do I think God wants me to do? And there's there's always that uh, that dichotomy and the challenge of you know the many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. That mm. proverb nineteen Proverbs nineteen twenty one, and I, there's no clean answer to that. But I love working with other entrepreneurs, especially entrepreneurs of faith, because we all wrestle with that in different ways. And so mm. exponential to me means you know. God has gifted me with this life, with my skills, talents, and abilities, and whatever they are, whether they're they're meager or um, or there's there's more to it. How do I then utilize those to be able to bless God or to to be able to Im improve and expand the kingdom? And that to me is really what I see as the the value of exponential, and um, it's something I'm constantly exploring and and thinking about, but. It's definitely taken on a different uh, viewpoint than that one-dimensional. Oh, it's exponential growth! Yay! You know, yeah, right. don't get me wrong. That's okay. I like yeah. that. Um, uh, somebody told me one time the best way to help the poor is to not be one, um, and <laughs> right. and that's true. I mean, like I I've, I've definitely had some ups and downs, and I joke, and it's probably not too far of a joke. I lost a million dollars before I ever made a million dollars. Mm. <clears throat> And, and as entrepreneurs, it's important that we do build a platform that we can then utilize in a way that that honors God and that, that builds the kingdom. Mm. So sometimes that happens. And in the last few years, I mean, it happens sometimes in failure. Mm. Um, people see us and things are going great. But when we made a, a wrong turn at Albuquerque, as Bugs Bunny would say, um, and you know, the bottom falls out and we're trying to just struggle for survival. 
how do we still honor God in that? And, yeah. and sometimes we don't like those opportunities as much, but in the, in the dark recesses of the entrepreneurial, oh my gosh, you know, I'm a fake. Nobody's going to ever, you know, work with me. I, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Sometimes in that are the best opportunities to just honor God and say, I trust you. Show me, um, give me wisdom and discernment. And um, that's hard. It's hard for me to sometimes ever quiet enough, as you can see, to listen to God. But that's the the challenge and that exponential kind of turn inward to say, okay, how does God utilize me? How does God utilize Brett and this this podcast or these relationships? And that's what's exciting because we just don't know, but the Lord does. Yeah. No, definitely. I love that. And I think that I just love, you know, your, your verbiage on using your business as a platform, uh, for your, for your mission. Uh, I think that if all the business owners out there listening and we can all just kind of unite together and use our, our businesses for good, um, for the glory of God, I think that, yeah, we can just make a dent in the darkness of the world. We can, there's so much division. We can come and unite together, uh, for, for a purpose. Um, I think honestly, that's why I'm, I'm speaking into business owner men's lives. I think that's the next, uh, wave of kingdom and just coming through this, uh, platform. So I love, I love your heart. Mm -hmm. I love your heart on that. And, and uh, can our businesses make us better, better men and women? Mm -hmm. You talked about the marriages. I think that's that's awesome. I've seen a lot of it go the other way, where our business uh, we sacrifice things for our business. Um, right. So yeah, I love that. So I cool. think maybe adding to that, you know, how do we develop exponential humility um, and humbleness and um, dare I even say meekness? You know, meek. We don't think of meek from a biblical perspective in the same way that the world does sometimes. Mm-hmm. But as the more that the world louds uh, honor on us how do we utilize that to be exponentially uh, humble or um, using that to glorify him rather than ourselves and i think that's that's hard i mean you know it's like we have this need to be recognized and patted on the back pat on the head and you've done great and and i'd be lying if i said that that's not important right but to be able to look at and and eventually hear the words you know well done good and faithful servant how do we keep that focused? And that's what I love about, you know, iron deep and iron sharpening iron, because it is so hard. I screw up so much. I'm, I'm off course way more than I'm on course, but to know and have uh, accountability partners who say, you know, Frank, you're, you're okay, but you're flawed, but I love you anyway. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do we do this journey together? And uh, we don't have to be, he he never called us to be perfect. He just called us. Mm-hmm. called us to follow and, and, yes. and with all of our imperfections and uh yeah now thank you for for just talking about iron deep and that's yeah that's why we're going down this road and uh we all need each other guys and uh yes um just if we dig down deeper and into our own purpose into our own mission and and use our businesses platform um but you're right i, I fail anytime i see someone else lifted up or glorified i'm like man why can't that be me like mm-hmm. you know i don't know there's some human instinct that's like oh why can't i yes. why can't i be as good as that guy mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, i know it's like <laughs> so uh well, that's awesome frank well frank where can someone if they're interested more about business mm-hmm. valuations kahuna where can they go I would say go to kahunaaccounting.com. Um, we have other businesses within Kahuna that we're focused on, but accounting is really the cornerstone from which everything else can, can be built. Accounting tells the story. And again, it's not about accounting, the, the mechanics or the, the methodology of accounting or any software. Accounting is simply just a way of aligning and calibrating and coordinating to your vision um, mission, goals, and ambition as an entrepreneur. And when you can do that through your accounting, looking forward, not just looking back, then you have a dynamic guidance system to be able to achieve what's most important to you. And I think as entrepreneurs, what we're really looking for is compression. Mm-hmm. We have no doubt, I mean, that confidence that we have, we will achieve. We've got the grit, tenacity, determination. We will achieve it. It's just, do we want to take the the long way and the hard way and the, the you know, bump our butt on the lily pads, or do we want to find a a level of compression to be able to expand and and express that 
sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the the goal that we want to be able to help entrepreneurs with, with their accounting. Again, it's not about the accounting, the debits and credits or any of those things, but as a forward-looking guidance system to be able to achieve your entrepreneurial vision, whether yeah. that's exponential or um, some variation of that. Awesome. Sounds good. We're going to put that in our show notes. Uh, so guys, go over to Kahuna Accounting. Uh, and uh, check out Frank's valuation system and get in touch with Frank and his team over there at Kahuna. Uh, we're going to put that in our show notes on our YouTube channel, so check that out, guys. Frank, it's been awesome, man. Thanks for being on the show today. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you and blessings to you, Brett, and all that you're doing. Thank you.